Hello everyone, my name is Milica stankovic brandl and I would like to show you today some recent findings we had on the influence of the opening size on the air velocity through the capsule in the capsule-based dry powder inhalers. So to start, in a capsule pre-meter DPI, a two-piece hard capsule is previously filled um, with a powder formulation and perforated in the device with needles from both sides. sides. Puncturing together with a patient air uh, actuation induces the release of the contained powder and brings it to the lungs. So physical chemical properties of the powder on the one side, together with the device and patient inspiratory flow on the other side, but also with the different factors related to, um, uh, to capsule filling process, conditions during capsule filling process, but also capsule material, so shell piercing properties, elasticity of the shell, as well as ambient temperature and humidity are all very important in the, uh, for the efficiency of the dose delivered to the lungs. Still, the dose delivered from the DPIs, from the capsule-based DPIs, is uh, very low. Given that experimental observation of processes within small inhaler device, device is, uh, is very difficult, Computational fluid dynamics um, and sim simulations are tools used for numerical analysis of dry powder inhalers to allow understanding of flow structures and resulting transport of drug particles. That brings us to the aim of this work, which was to compare the sizes of the openings or punctures of differently stored and lubricated gelatin capsules, pierced using plastiape inhaler, inhaler to compare further the size of the openings to the emission of the fine particle dose delivered through the given opening and to understand the airflow circulation through the capsules opening in relation to the size of the opening area and to relate this to the delivery of the fine particle dose. So how this was done? So capsules were, were lubricated after uh, production. This is a standard process that allows capsules to be better processable, not to stick to each other at here. So in this study, we used sodium lauryl sulfate, carnobavax, and magnesium stearate, and we used capsules without lubricants as a reference. So these were gelatin capsules, size three inhalation types of capsules, stored for seven days at two different humidities, 22 and 51%. So we assume that this lubrication of capsules could have impact on mechanical properties of capsules and also on piercing properties of capsules. So we pierce these capsules with plastiape device on both sides and we evaluated the opening area via camera and image J program. So we use the area of the needle as our 100% and compare to the actual um, openings of the, of the pierced capsules. In parallel, all these capsules were filled with a blend of 1% of budesonide and 99% of Finhalac 230, which is a lactose carrier, and 25 milligram of blend was um, filled in a capsule using automatic capsule filler, Flexalab, MG2, at 22% and 51% relative humidity, using capsule filling speed of 1,500 capsules per hour. Further, aerodynamic performance was evaluated using fast screening impactor. So this was our experimental approach. Computational approach via CFD was used further to analyze the effect the opening sizes have on the circulation of air within the capsule. So according to um, Bank and Al, rotation of capsules were 2,500 um, RPM for the flow rate of 60 liter per minute. We um, included just the primary capsule rotation and excluded the secondary capsule rotation. And we also excluded um, contacts of capsules to the wall. So this was just a very simplified um, uh, simulation to see what difference the, the air, the uh, opening size has on the airflow circulation. So this brings um, me to some results. As you can see here, there are some um, difference in the opening areas between non-lubricated capsules and lubricated capsules. So non-lubricated capsules appear to have a larger opening area compared to lubricated. However, 
there were not a very large difference between um, a lubricant, different lubricants. Emitted dose was similar from all types of capsules, also on both uh, humidities. And um, what was very interesting to observe was if you can notice on this um, a figure, on the y axis is opening in percentage, on the x axis is fine particle dose. We can see here the gelatin capsules without um, um, a lubricant had larger openings for capsules stored at, um, and filled at 51%, and they had the lowest fine, fine particle dose. The fine particle dose was um, lower than 20 uh, micrograms. Slightly lower opening was noticed for gelatin capsules without lubricant, and they deliver higher fi fine particle dose. So here we could, we could see that, um, uh, and, and uh, sorry, they were filled at um, um, a lower relative humidity at 22%. So here we could see that there is a larger effect on the, of the humidity uh, on the delivery of fine particle dose, so humidity during capsule filling, than on the actual opening area. Also, when we compare non-lubricated to lubricated capsules, we could see here that um, all lubricated capsules had um, a lower opening areas, so around 47-50%. Um, and uh, 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 capsules lubricated with sodium lauryl sulfate at lower relative field at lower relative humidity had a highest par a fine particle dose. So that being said, According to this data, it seemed that the opening size, so the larger opening size, um, does not necessarily um, mean larger um, or higher dose delivered to the lungs. So we wanted to further um, investigate um, why this is happening, so and uh, what is effect of um, opening size on the air circulation. So we took these two examples, 22% um, storage and gelatin capsules without lubricants, which had area of 76%, and gelatin capsules with SLS, area of around 40%. And um, th these were their delivery of fine particle dose, and we tried to simulate air through these capsules. So if you can see here, the air velocity um, within the capsule is lower than air velocity outside of the capsule. So the red color uh, shows the air velocity outside of the capsules and a blue is uh, of course inside of the capsules. So that being said, we try to um, um, calculate how much air circulates through, through these openings. And for gelatin capsules without lubricant, which had area of 76%, um, air flow through the gelatin capsules is around 0.5%. Um, 12 liters per minute, which is 0.20% of the total flow we use for this, um, we, we assumed in this study as 60 liters per minute. Also for the capsules of smaller area, uh, flow of air was uh, substantially lower, so 0.10% of the total flow. Also, when we consider the smaller openings, inside of the capsule air, when we have a smaller opening, air is circulating faster. So when we saw the, the results of the fine particle dose, we could see that for the smaller opening um, um, of the capsules, we had higher particles, fine particle dose. This could indicate that when we have the smaller openings and faster air circulation, that the particles, API particles are being better disattached from the carrier and therefore better aerolyzed afterwards. So to conclude, larger opening area was observed for non-lubricated capsules compared to lubricated capsules. But fine particle dose was not directly related to the opening size. It was related more to the um, relative humidity during capsule filling process. There was a very visible effect of the opening area on the air circulation through the capsules, which could be uh, nicely demonstrated using CFD. So that being said, CFD uh, simulation is a is a powerful tool to predict changes in air velocity through the different opening sizes and this could also be used for a further study that we are attempting to, uh, to perform next, so numerical discrete element method simulation with inclusion of particles where we can then correlate better the behavior of actual particles with the uh, air velocity within uh, DPI. 
also these simulations and this kind of studies can be very uh, important for carrier free formulations where we have just api particles and can then directly correlate these to the air velocity within the capsules i would like to thank to my colleagues for um, assisting in this study and partners of course and thank you for listening if you have any questions please um, um, feel free to, to contact me using this email address